I'm Joe James, and in this video I'm going to explain n choose k problems. This is relevant to both computer science and statistics. The problem is, from a set of n items, we want to choose k items, and we're trying to determine the number of possible combinations of items. An order does not matter, and the number of items we're choosing, k, is always going to be between 0 and n. You'll see these types of notation commonly used for n choose k problems, I'm going to use the upper two in this video. So in a five choose three problem, you might have five different circles, and you need to choose three of those. We don't care about order, you just have to choose three, and we want to find out how many different possible color combinations there are. So blue, green, orange, uh, orange, purple, red, those are two different possible combinations. That is a common in choose K problem. So there's a standard formula for solving it. Actually, there are a couple of different ones I'll show you here. This one I'm going to explain in the next slide. The basic formula is this. So if you get one thing out of this video, remember this formula. n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. So back to our 5 choose 3 problem. From 5 different marbles choose 3. How many different combinations are there? So n equals 5 here because there are 5 different possible marbles and k equals 3 because we need to choose 3. So our formula is this. We're going to plug in n equals 5 and k equals 3 and we get the number of possible combinations is 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. And 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. So 2 factorial is just 2 and 3 factorial is 3 times 2. So when we work out the math, we can see 3 times 2 cancel each other out. We get 5 times 4 over 2, which is 10. So there are 10 different possible combinations for the 5 choose 3 problem. So if we were going to choose letters instead of marbles or colors, A, B, C, D, E, 5 choose 3, we can see the 10 different possible combinations here on the right. But we could actually boil this problem down. We could reduce this problem to two smaller problems. So if we choose A, then we would need to choose two of the remaining four items. So it would become a four choose two problem. And that's what we have here on these items on the left. You can see that we chose A for all of these, and we need to choose two of the remaining four, and there are six different possibilities. And if we don't choose A, then we need to pick three of the remaining four items, which is what we have here on the right. We have A not selected, and we have to choose three of the remaining four items. And we can see there are four different combinations. So the n choose k problem can be reduced to n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k, which is exactly what we've done here in this. So that suggests that in choose k problems could be solved recursively in computer programming. Another way to look at in choose k problems is using Pascal's triangle. When we structure a triangle like this with n on top and k on the bottom, and the top number is the number, the row number, so we can see row number 0, row number 1, row number 2, row number 3, and k basically starts from 0 at the left item, and increases by one each one each item to the right. So what Pascal found is that the number of combinations possible when you structure a triangle like this for let's say this cell here which would correspond to 4 choose 2 is equal to the sum of the two cells directly above it. So this 3 and this 3 added together makes 6. So that three, 4 choose 2 is equal to 3 choose 1 plus 3 choose 2. And our previous slide, our example that we showed, 5 choose 3, and we found there were 10 different combinations, is equal to the sum of 4 choose 2 and 4 choose 3, which are 6 plus 4. That gives us 10 different possible combinations. So Pascal's triangle is an easier way to look at the number of possible combinations by simply summing the two above it. And you can do that until you get to the top row, which is 1, which is your base case. That concludes my video on in choose k problems. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please click like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.